Hello, hello, hello to a sort of kind of afterthoughts video on my reading of The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Whenever I've finished a book on this channel, I sit down and, and talk a bit about what went through my mind while reading it and what also went through my mind after I finished it. Sometimes these videos are more like videos on the reading itself. Sometimes they are more about the book and about the topics of the book. And I think this video will be, will be one of the latter ones. Um, if you're looking for an in-depth analysis of the book, though, this video is probably not what you're looking for. But maybe, maybe some of the questions raised... Um, at least the questions that I think that this book raised might be of interest to you as well. The main theme, basically the one big theme of this novella is, of course, the duality of human nature. The duality of good and evil within the, for the lack of a better word, within the human soul. And specifically the question of can we separate our good side from our evil side? Meaning, can we only be good or only be evil? And I think that Stevenson gave a clear answer on how he thinks about this. And this is what I try to, what I try to or will try to carve out in this video. The Inner struggle between good and evil is, is not an uncommon topic in literature, is it? Let's face it, the inner struggle, the interior struggle of characters in fiction are usually much more interesting than the big plot because the inner struggle is what really drives the plot and therefore the story. It is what, what creates the tension. It is what makes the story really exciting. The inner struggle, the interior struggle versus the exterior struggle, the hero versus themselves and the hero versus the world. It's, it's that spiral, right, that really pulls us into the story. Great heroes in, in fiction are never only good. That would be boring. They have... They're dark sides too, and usually their dark sides diametrically stand in opposition to what they want to achieve. And by fighting their dark sides, by overcoming them, they eventually rise to become a better person and succeed in destroying the big evil outside. And this usually underlying, slightly hidden, interwoven topic of the inner struggle is what Stevenson made the main topic of his novella. He focuses on that, and that in a very fascinating and, at least for the time, in a very unique way. We all know people, either know them personally or from the news, right, from television, from the internet, from newspapers, who seem to be absolutely ruthless, who seem to not have any empathy or conscience at all. And we ask ourselves, how can they even look at themselves in the mirror? Jekyll doesn't like what he sees when he looks in, into the mirror and when he sees Hyde. And fascinatingly enough, he is aware that he is Hyde at that moment, at least in the beginning. Right? Over time, Hyde more and more takes over and more and more become, becomes a, uh, a separate persona, a separate identity. And others don't like what they see either when, when they meet Hyde. Everyone who ever met Hyde had this feeling of disgust that goes beyond his physical appearance and even beyond his evil deeds. And nobody really knows why. And I found that pretty remarkable because it goes beyond Hyde being physically appalling and also beyond Hyde 
doing evil deeds. And Stevenson implied, at least that is what I took out of this novel, that or novella, that and he did that even very, very early in, in the novella, right? When Enfield tells Utterson about the strange encounter he had with Hyde and the little girl, and this is sort of a common thread throughout the book. People had a strange feeling when they met Hyde. So, at least according to Stevenson, there seems to be more than just the physicality of a person and more than the behavior of a person that attracts or pushes us away from them. On a different note, uh, I like this sort of, sort of MacGuffin approach that explained, in big quotes, how the transition from Jekyll to Hyde and, and back is initiated, but doesn't really give a real in-depth explanation how exactly it works, right? What it does to the person. And if you don't know what a, what a MacGuffin is, um, the term MacGuffin was coined by the English screenwriter Angus MacPhail and gained prominence later when, when it was adopted by Alfred Hitchcock in, in his movies. The MacGuffin is an object or an event or a device, right, that is necessary to the plot and the motivation of the characters. But in itself, it is basically irrelevant. In, in this book, it is, uh, we know of the potion made from some salts that makes the transformation from Jekyll to Hyde and from Hyde to Jekyll possible. That's it. No real further explanation. We don't know exactly what kind of salts uh, were used and how to exactly make the potion. And the MacGuffin has become a, a common thing in fiction. Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man because he was bitten by a radioactive spider in Pulp Fiction. There is the briefcase that John Travolta's and Samuel L. Jackson's characters have to bring to Ving Rhames's character, and that starts it all. We don't know what's in the briefcase, and it doesn't matter. Novels and movies are, are full of MacGuffins, of uh, formulas, powerful weapons, secret papers that have to be found or delivered or whatever, right? Bruce Banner becomes the Hulk because he was exposed to radiation, etc., etc., etc. And that all just to trigger the plot. These things are usually completely exchangeable. So the potion is a plot device, basically but it is not essential for the story itself. It could have been anything, really. A pill, a magic stone, doesn't really matter what it is. Another thing that I, that I liked, and that is probably very obvious, but I want to mention it nonetheless, is the name Mr. Hyde, which is quite symbolic, isn't it? And spelling it with an with a Y instead of an I is a, is a clever play on words, given that Jekyll is also spelled with a Y. Stevenson even made a joke out of this by Utterson saying that because he tries to find Mr. Hyde, he himself is now Mr. Seek. But, but back to the duality. Our evil side is something we, we usually push back, right? We try to hide it. We hide it from others. We hide it from ourselves. And sometimes we hide it by rationalizing it. Even the worst of the worst people in human history hardly ever stated that they do evil things because they want to be evil or because they enjoy doing evil. They often claim that they had to do it or they did it for a greater good and therefore claim it wasn't even evil. The end justifies the means. So basically what they do is they try to take themselves out of the responsibility of their deeds. This raises, of course, the question whether evil is something that is a matter of context, whether evil exists no matter of the context. That certainly goes beyond what I can and even want to discuss in, in a video like this, but it is a powerful question, or 
basically two powerful questions. Sure, there were and there are people who do evil things simply because of the pleasure it gives them, or who do things that give them pleasure regardless whether this hurts others. And Hyde certainly belongs to th that group of people. And that is what, at least in my opinion, makes him evil. Hyde fears the consequences of his deeds, though. He is afraid of the gallows. He doesn't care for others. He only cares for himself. He shows no remorse for what he did, not even the murder he committed, but he fears the consequences. And I think here we are at the pivoting point of this novella. Here is what this novella is really about. Dr. Jekyll did not try to separate his good side from his evil side by fighting the evil, to eventually be only good and to destroy the evil, but rather to separate himself from it and not to take any responsibility for what Hyde does. He even, he even enjoyed the things Hyde did in the beginning, right? And he rational, rationalized it by saying, I didn't do it, it was Hyde. So, as I see it, by letting it happen, what he did was to actually create evil, set evil free. By trying to take himself out of the responsibility, he made evil possible. So, there is, as I see it, no difference between Jekyll and Hyde. Yes, sure, Jekyll tried to undo, to, to make good for, to, to rectify what Hyde did, but by creating this persona, by letting this persona do what he does and did, wasn't it actually Jekyll himself who did it? as Mr. Hyde. So he created the devil and let the devil do. So isn't he actually the one who did it? To come back to the initial, uh, the initial question, can we separate our good side from our evil side? I think Stevenson made it clear that he thinks, at least in this fictional context, if we try to attempt to separate the good from the evil, we do not have a good person and an evil person, but actually two evil personas. The one that commits the atro atrocious deeds and the other that lets it happen and who eventually, when trying to stop the evil from happening, has to destroy both. So, does this mean pure good cannot exist? I think that the good, in its purest form, means one thing. It means accepting the duality of the human soul and doing our best in trying to tame the evil within and not let it out. So, <laughs> this is what, what went through my mind while reading the book. And sure, this is just one, one tiny little fraction of the story. But I think I can honestly say that this is what the essence of this book was to me. What, what were your thoughts? Did you read the book before? Have you listened maybe to, to my reading or any other person's reading of, of the book? What do you think is this book about? What, what are your thoughts on, on evil, on, on, on good? I, I really, I, I'm really interested in that. So uh, if you want to share it, please don't hesitate and put it in the comments. So yeah, I think that's it for today. Bye-bye. Till next time, tomorrow on this channel there will be, or the next video on this channel, depending on 
uh, when you watch this. And the next uh, video on this channel is the next chapter of uh, A Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. I haven't decided yet which book I will read um, to replace um, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But there are a couple of books that I that I'm thinking about. So yeah, so much for today. Bye bye. Till next time.